All right, you know who's here tonight? Of course you know who's here tonight. Yeah, you just we told announced me. it. I announced it, then you announced it. It was a rhetorical question. Yeah, we had it on the board all day. <laughs> I know well, who's here tonight. it was just that kind of a question. You know who's here. Uh, on Deserves no answer. On September 10th, <laughs> at the Forum in Los Angeles, Muhammad Ali is fighting a return match with Ken Norton, the first man who ever managed to really, really silence him. And he did that, as you well know, by breaking his jaw in that last fight. Would you welcome our good friend, Muhammad Ali. Now, champ, let me ask you this. How's your old friend Howard Gosell, by the way? Oh, he's fine. Yeah. How you feeling? You've been... I'm feeling pretty good. I was wired Last time up. I saw you on a show, you were talking like this. Yeah, like a ventriloquist. I was wired, wired up for about four weeks. It was supposed to be about five, but I healed off faster than an ordinary fellow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you probably would. Yeah. Now, you know, you like to talk. You know, you're a loquacious type of fellow, and you come on here and you been with us a dozen times on this show at least. How does it feel to have to have well, the jaw wired Well, going into the hospital and then they give you a needle, take the count uh, from 10 to 1 backwards and by the time you get to 7, you sleep. Right. And when I woke up, I couldn't move my teeth. And I got a mirror and all my teeth were wired and almost went crazy. Just yeah, the idea I couldn't talk. That is... But you sound I, like Ed I, Sullivan I when it, you do I that. I made it. I made it you pretty good. I made it pretty good. Yeah, I know you did. Does it feel... That's Pretty now, good now? Yes, I have about five more weeks before I can take any punches on it, but <clears throat> I understand they usually heal ordinarily harder than they were at first. Yeah. Now, uh, didn't, you, didn't you have a problem with a, with a, with a tooth? Uh, well, about three of my breaking or something bottom or what? teeth out. And what happened was it made the jaw kind of weak. Plus, my mouth was open. open. I was clowning one time too many, and I got hit trying to talk. Yeah. During the fight. <laughs> Are you still talking to the opponent during the fight? I sometimes, thought you gave that up. Well, I, sometimes I do, but I still, I said something. And <clears throat> this is what happened in the whole fight period. It's not being serious and playing and not living according to my religious teachings. Like, I know I should, and I only look at this as a spanking, and this will make me be more serious, train harder, and not take people for granted. Now, what didn't you do that you should have done? Well, many, many things that... I really can't go into, and it's not really for nobody but to know it but me. No, oh, well, I didn't want to be personal. <laughs> you answer just what you want to answer. So, uh, uh, how, how'd you take nourishment? All liquid? Uh... Well, yes. Uh, <coughs> this has caused me to be a vegetarian now. I don't eat meat no more. All I eat is fish. Not really? Yeah. I didn't think I could make it. Uh, I've met people who were vegetarians in the past, and I said, no meat? How do you do it? This is what we might think, but all my food was put in blenders. Like my wife would cook a pot of cabbage and then blend it up. Yeah. And it would come out like a milkshake. And all you had to do was drink it, the same thing. Cabbage milkshake? Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, that type, creamy, you know. Mm. Same with the corn and the, uh, even fish with a little cream in it. And well, you're not a, a true so vegetarian, then. You do eat fish. Oh, yes, fish. Yeah, but no beef or that type of animal right. stuff. Right. So I'm going to see how long I can go, but I was surprised. I really feel better. I, don't be as tired or nothing. Now, how about your weight? Does that affect your weight a lot? Well, I'm heavier now. I don't know why, but I haven't been training. I'm just laying around the house and, and uh, eating. But I have to start training about another week because this second time, I'm going to really be ready. Norton is going to have to really watch out. Yeah. Because musically speaking, if he don't see sharp, he's going to be flat. <laughs> You think that's been inside you for four weeks with your wo jaws <laughs> wired shut and you couldn't get that one out. <laughs> what round in the fight uh, did, did this broken jaw uh, round happen? Round two, round, second round. It was a hard thing. Uh, that's incredible and uh, that you could even stay in a ring and have somebody hit you in the I, face with a broken jaw. I, I mean, realized that was incredible. I had to, if I did knock him out, I, I realized at that point, I didn't know if it was broken or not, but my whole system was off and it's a bad, bad feeling. I mean, just to move your mouth, something's just, just broke. And moving and missing a punch or throwing a punch, you could feel a jar just jumping around. And I had to go 10 rounds without getting hit on that jaw again. And I was surprised the next day in the hospital watching the reruns that the fight was as close as it was. In the 11th round, the fight was even. And the man who won the 12th round was winning. So he came out slugging. So for me yeah. to win the 12th round, I would have to stand out toe to toe 
know, and I might catch a couple on the broke jaw. So my main objective was to retreat and just let right. the fight in. But with 18,000 people in the place and been seen in 40-something countries live and everybody on home television in America on Wide World of Sports and just quit, I couldn't <clears throat> dream of it. But I'm lucky and thankful that I didn't really get hurt seriously. Now, what could have happened if he would have really, I mean, how bad could that have well, the doctor, gone if he well, would have, you'd have fought and hit a conch several times? When the jaw is usually broke, <coughs> both sides around the same point, but for some unusual reason, just this side was broken, not this one. And if I'd got hit with a hard punch from a 200 and say 15 pounder, <laughs> no, from a 215 pounder right on the end that was broke, he said could mean death probably. So it would just completely tear that bone all the way around. Now, that's the first time you've really, in your career, even as an amateur or in the, at any time, that you've really had a, an injury, is that Not just an injury. This is an injury that is the worst injury any fighter could have and still be conscious. And some of them have been knocked out and some have died. But to still be conscious and have the pain and to have a broken jaw, and I, ain't no injury, no worse. You know, I, I saw the repeat of the movie the other night with Kirk. I think we've talked about this on the show, but it still intrigues me because... You're in the only sport I know, uh, and a lot of sports writers wonder sometimes whether it's really even a sport, where two men come out, mm -hmm. and the express purpose is to injure the other man. I mean, in football, of course, the idea is to tackle hard and to knock him down, but you, your idea is to go out and really batter another man My, senseless you know, or to is, knock him unconscious. This is why my fights have been criticized, because I had Jerry Quarry in that spot, and I called the referee and stopped. I wouldn't do it. I had James Ellis in that spot, I had Buster Mathis, I had uh, Floyd Patterson, and I've been criticized for not really knocking them out or hurting them because it's not my purpose. My purpose is to win in any way I can, but not really to hurt him for life. Well, I, I don't think any fighter wants to do that, but there's always that possibility, of course, when you have to hit a man well, as heavy target. as you guys are, that you can permanently injure him. Well, I'd rather get hit with those gloves than some of these car drivers I see, and these hockey players, they pick up <laughs> oh, the name. I'll buy that. Sure. Yeah, maybe hockey is another game where the idea is to kill your opponent, having having watched some of them. And football can be rough too. Does the thought ever? I saw the the uh, replay of the motion picture of, by Kirk Douglas, Champion, where he played the fighter. Does that thought ever enter your mind? And you know it's happened to some fighters when you get into a ring, that the possibility always exists that you could you could end in some kind of injury that would end your career or. Make you. Uh... I'm going to tell you something you might understand. You might not agree. You might not understand, but. The worst thing I hate about my career is going to where I have to be. Like I'm on the college speaking tour now. Right. Richard Fulton, my college agent here in New York, he's always got some college I'm going to go to. And most time I can't do it, but we just went to Auburn, Alabama, Auburn University. I had to be at Howard Cosell Roast Dinner in Los Angeles last Sunday night. I mean, Monday, Sunday night, yeah, Sunday night. <clears throat> and the next evening I had to be in Auburn, Alabama, so we had to fly. Yeah. So I hate airplanes. I do it, but I just the idea of this big thing going through there at 600 mile an hour through turbulence and rain and just one thing can't happen. And yet it's mechanical, there's so many wires and switches involved, but if one thing happened up there, I'm finished. I never worry about boxing. And the pilot tells me, he says, how can you be a boxer? Are you frightened? And the planes are shaking. Oh, oh. I guess it's all relative, isn't it? So if you, I guess if you're fatalistic about it that way, I guess you should be, because if you're gonna fight, you can't have that psyche out all the time that I may get hurt. Well, I've been fighting. hurt a few times. I've fell off motorcycles and uh, I've had car accidents, almost got killed. But I've never been in a plane that did one thing wrong. Well, so, you know, I don't want to be in one doing one thing wrong. <laughs> I'm with you. We'll, uh, we're going to take a break here. Uh, now it's time to find the answer to the question What's a matador? We're talking with uh, Muhammad Ali and Jack Albertson is going to join us later, and Marty Brill, Marilyn May, and the amazing Kreskin. Does your, uh, does your wife ever pressure you to quit? Every movie no. I see, usually no. the, somewhere along the line, the tearful wife comes up and says, you got to quit. She don't like sports. <laughs> she don't like sports, period, but she never worries until the last fight, and then she worries. For some reason, she knew my jaw was broke before the doctors at the X-ray hospital. Your wife knew the jaw was... And why, I don't know, but she did. But... Uh, you just mentioned how many people are coming on. I have to start winning my fights because I used to come on last. You always came on first. No, you used to always came on. Always came on first. Champions always come on first. You have everybody come on and Muhammad Ali, yes, and you have everybody on first because everybody stays at home waiting to see me. <laughs> yes. now, now, 
now. Why don't you go now. beat up Kreskin? So now. <laughs> You can beat up Kreskin, you can come on last. Uh, about your wife, she never says give it no, up? No, never. Can I ask you a question? Now, you don't have to answer this because it is a little bit personal. But you, uh, as a person who is, uh, are a celebrity, you kind of have to give up a little privacy occasionally. And I only ask this question, not for shock value, but for example. Uh, and this goes way back in any athletic endeavor or wars. They used to say that the Romans, before they went into battle, the women could not be with the Roman soldiers before the battle had weakened them. Uh, I've heard... <laughs> That's true. You've heard... <laughs> now, I'm not... As I say, I don't want to be personal, but uh, football players, they say, we don't want women in training camps uh, because it weakens boxes. the same fire. Now, Same with boxers. Do you have to stay same virginal as it is before a fight? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I was only interested as a, an academic uh, question. I, I'm not... <laughs> Trying to uh, fellas, check into your personal life. You, a fellow as handsome as you are, and as popular as you are, Johnny Carson, I imagine you walk down the street in Cleveland or Washington, New York, and if somebody see him, I mean, every day he's in everybody's house. Who don't know Johnny Carson? I mean, do you have much trouble with girls when you go out there trying to... <laughs> no, we wasn't stop the... Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What kind, what kind of answer Wait is that? That wasn't Perhaps the... I can phrase it better for Mohammed. Certainly. How about you before a show? <laughs> At my age, I can't do it before I brush my teeth. <laughs> I mean, I lose that much strength. I can't get the brush to go. You know what I meant. Well, I... Does it in any way sap your strength? Well, we have a train. I just built a training camp in Deer Lake, Pennsylvania. About 20 miles out of Reading, mm -hmm. and it cost me about some $170,000 to complete it. I have a log cabin training quarters, a big a couple of bunk houses, a restaurant, and we have horses, tables. And I built all of this just to get away from my wife. <laughs> ah, well, then you've answered and the question. We're up on the mountain. See, so. There it is, every day, up and down the mountain. <laughs> and, uh, making a joke. <laughs> little joke there. The little joke. No, you've answered the question. No, I was an honest question, and I didn't mean to really dig into your personal life. So you're predicting we that you're going to win this? We have a fence around and wild dogs. Why? Ain't nobody come in. <laughs> oh. So you, you want to stay with us a second, or do you have to run, or what? You can you can stay a while, or whatever you'd like to do. Uh, if you're finished with me, I appreciate going because I have a stop to make. You got to get into training, and you you got to get to sleep mm, and everything, no, don't you? Not that quick, but I have another stop to make. Yeah. All right, the, the bout is September the 10th in the, the Forum in Los Angeles with Ken Norton. Ken Norton. And uh, I promise you the second time will be real different from the first time. Okay, that's promise. promise. All right, take care of yourself. All right, thank you, Ken. Take care. <laughs>